Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is your master bather, Scott Bradfield, and this is the uh, freshly laundered shirt edition of the uh, of reading great books in the bathtub. I've I've been really dogging it with these these kind of beat up old shirts and on. So I, I put a freshly laundered shirt on for you guys today, just in honor. And we're having a drink, Manhattan uh, drink, to my, one of my all time favorite writers and one of my all time favorite people. I miss him all the time, and that is. Thomas Dish, Thomas M. Dish. Our friend Andy in, in Belfast asked for an intro on Tom Dish, and I, I, I've been putting it off for no real reason except that I, I, I've read so much of Dish over the years, I've enjoyed him for so many decades, that uh, I, just, I just hadn't read him in a while. I want to do something fresh with it. But what I thought we would do mainly today is just talk about the great pile of stuff that Dish produced in his life. He, uh, I, I don't can remember the dates, but I'll put a couple links to some uh, piece I wrote about Tom several years ago when he committed suicide. As he predicted, as he told everyone he would, for, he was almost he it was almost like a blog posting when when Tom set up his his countdown to his his death, as I understood. And um, one of the one of the, uh, um, this, the my one few, one of my few regrets is I didn't know anything about that stuff going on until really the last after he was already gone. Um, I really wish I could have said goodbye. So this is to say goodbye to Tom Dish, one of my favorite writers, one of my favorite people. Um, Tom, Tom had all sorts of different names, and he produced work in all sorts of different genres. I, can't, I think the best thing to do is to just kind of go, I, I put up a big pyramid here. Look at this. The production people put this up together. It's not very classy. And uh, I just put a pyramid. As you'll see, if you look at my shelves, there's lots of gaps when I took down all the Tom Dish books I could find, and again, there's gaps over on these other shelves you can't see, um, it was, um, you know, it just, it really is a huge uh, uh, chunk of my, my library. Um, so I thought I'd just go by and, and see what's here, maybe suggest there's so many places to start. If you've not read Tom Dish, you are missing something. He's funny, he's dark, he's, he knows how, never writes a bad sentence or a bad line. Uh, his stuff is, is peculiar and brilliant. Everything he does. Um, he was a critic as well as a novelist and short story writer. He wrote this funny book called The Dreams Our Stuff Is Made Of. Every title, every line by Tom Dish is interesting. The reversal of Shakespeare's The Stuff Our Dreams Is Made Of. And it's a very funny, affectionate, and, and, um, and, and bitter and hostile look at science fiction and the history of science fiction, and he makes lots of fun points along the way if you like science fiction. One of my favorite chapters is, he always had a way of getting through the bullshit. One of my favorite chapters is the one that's called Poe, Our Embarrassing Ancestor. I mean, he sums up Poe right there. That's, he's our embarrassing uncle. So uh, if you haven't, you'll find this somewhere. In the late 80s, early 90s, Tom started writing, a, he had been around for a long time. He had originally published as a science fiction writer, peculiarly, and as a poet. Those were the two genres he would seem to be most successful in most quickly. And he, uh, he, he produced lots of paperback science fiction. He sort of almost very quickly turned science fiction novels into a real high and peculiar art form. And he wrote lots of short stories. His short stories are probably his greatest stuff. And I think it's his best stuff. But still, at the end, in, in the late 80s and early 90s, he started writing these books for Knopf, which are kind of large, faddish, complicated horror novels. And they're all really good. Um, I, I, the MD was the, was the first of the, of the Knopf series. And it's called the MD, A Horror Story. And the first two-thirds of it are brilliant. I have one bone to pick with Tom's uh, novels, and I always felt the last quarter, 25% of a Tom Dish novel, sometimes gets a little too much. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the genocides. He, he does not like most of his major characters, and he t tends to put them through nightmarish, horrific fates. And the last 25% of some of his books, or the last 20% uh, of his books, are often just winding these people up and just churning them into sausage. He just turns them into sausage. And as I recall, that's what happens to the MD. But it's a great thriller, great fun, comic, bizarre uh, horror novel. Um, he wrote another one. Again, all the, just the titles are brilliant. The Sub, as in The Substitute Teacher, A Study in Witchcraft. This is actually a really good one. As I recall, that's one of the better ones. Um, again, I'm going through these at total random. 
This is a book he wrote with his, his partner, lifetime partner, uh, Charles Naylor. And I never met Charles, but uh, it was uh, when Charles died that uh, uh, Tom's last few years were quite tragic in a way. And when he lost his partner, he also lost his home. And I, I, I'll talk about that maybe near the end. Neighboring Lives is a very peculiar book Tom wrote with Charlie, or his partner, Charles Naylor. And it's very episodic. It's based on only Tom Dish would, and would write these books on uh, Thomas Carlyle and his circle. So it's a series of episodes about all these different people, including Turner and Chopin shows up and w William Morris, <clears throat> um, the Rossettis. All the characters are were significant figures in, in the, the British literary scene uh, are all kind of beautifully depicted. And it's like a series of stories. I only read this last year. I loved it. It, it's, um, it is a peculiar, different book. And only Dish could have written it, and Naylor obviously worked quite. Was it brings out a flavor of Dish that you don't see in his other books. Uh, I really recommend this as for a historical novel, particularly if you're interested in that period. Here, I think, is the best Dish novel, *The Priest*, and the subtitle was *A Gothic Romance*. This is, I think, is his best novel because it kind of works through the concluding chapters. I always had trouble with the last chapters of a Dish novel. And I think the concluding chapters work. And it, it's a gothic romance. One of Tom's many, possibly his biggest hatred was for the Catholic Church. Tom hated the Catholic Church. He was raised in the Catholic Church, and he hated the hypocrisy of it. And here's a book from th now 20 years ago or more, which depicts the hypocrisy and the violence and the abuse of children and the abuse of women. And that is systematic in this church. And there's one priest who's more diabolical than the others, and he's the central uh, Dracula-type character. Also, it has a hero. I don't remember many Tom Dish novels that have heroes in them. And the hero, of course, is a gay priest. <laughs> so Tom was gay, by the way. and but, but the notion of the gay priest, you're not supposed to be gay in the Catholic Church, and you're not supposed to be married. I think he's a gay priest in the partner. I can't remember exactly. I want to show you his picture. I got, oh, there's a good picture of Tom. I'll put another picture up. He's a love, he was just a lovely man. There's the tattoos. I think he was in the military. I really was a soft-spoken person. These are his poems. Yes, let's. This is a select new and selected poems from, I don't remember, the 80s or something. I have lots of cards. Most of mine I got signed by Tom when I knew him over the years. Uh, and this was his. Oh, he used to send Christmas cards and Christmas poems. This kind of inspired me to send out Christmas stories years ago. This, the, the titles. Just the titles. Yes, let's. <laughs> That's a lovely title. Yes, let's. Um, he did, okay, so we've got, he's had poetry. He does horror novels. He does criticism. He does children's books, The Tale of Dan the Lion. And the one that you might all know, uh, The Brave Little Toaster. Tom wrote The Brave Little Toaster as a children's book and sold it to Disney. It's a great story, the story. He sold it to, to, to Walt Disney, and they were going to make it into a big, uh, you know, animated uh, extravaganza. At the time, animation was becoming too expensive. This is how I recall it. So they did a kind of cheapy version of The Brave Little Toaster. If you see this movie, a lot of my students saw it. I didn't see it when it came out because it went straight to video. It went straight to video at the time when video rentals were becoming big in the 80s, and a lot of my students were raised watching the original version of The Brave Little Toaster, which is based on the book. It is incredibly dark for a children's book. It's, they're like these creatures. They can't move, and they can't do anything, and they're, and they're just being, there's just sections where they're just being sucked down into the dirt, into quicksand, and they just, it is the most hopeless children's com cartoon I've ever seen, um, with a kind of happy ending tagged on by Disney. But, um, and this is the sequel, The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars. Um, Tom, by, by the way, Tom, because of his experience with Disney, they hired him to write plots. I love telling this story. And they hired him to write plots for their, uh, for their animated series. And he gave them the plot for a, a, a mo an animated movie about lions that was based on Hamlet. It's the only Tom Dish would tell a cartoon based on Hamlet. And, of course, The Lion King results. I don't, 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 I don't want to hear from the Disney people. I don't think you're supposed to tell you that, but that's, that's what I heard. Um, 
Here's another Tom Dish. He published this as as Leonie Hargrave. Tom also liked to write under pseudonyms. This is a, a gothic, another kind of gothic historical novel set in England. Tom lived in London for many, many, many years and loved London. And this is actually a great thriller, very funny, very comic, very dark, like everything Tom did. A lot of his stories and books were paperback originals. He was also a great okay editor. We mentioned all the different things he did. He was a great editor. Every single book he edited, The Ruins of Earth was an original, mainly original uh, short stories in the, in the 70s and 60s. So he wrote, uh, he, he edited, he did a novelization of The Prisoner, which many people think is a great book. It's not my favorite Tom Dish book. He did something called 334, which is a, a brilliant little experiment in telling stories. I, I can't remember Echo Round His Bones, 102 H Bombs. Just the titles are great. How could you how can you beat 102 H Bombs? Um, and that's a great book. I think the story was Tom had put his best stories, the stories he liked best, in another collection called Fun with Your New Head. I don't I have that as a, a British hardcover. And he put the ones he didn't like in 102 H Bombs. And you won't not tell the difference. All the stories are great. He never, I don't think he ever wrote a bad short story. Um, this is another one that's fun. The House That Fear Built. I have not read this. Tom and his best, his buddy, one of the great comic writers of all time, John Slotick, wrote a cup, two or three gothic romances under the name Cassandra Nye very quickly and for money. And uh, I'm sure it's funny. I, I don't, either, neither of these guys could write a bad sentence. And, uh, and they wrote those together. This is my copy of The Businessman. It's another one of Tom's stories. Um, on Wings of Song. Again, I, can't re I haven't read this in a long time, but it, it, as I recall, it has a kind of a comic, satiric vision of, of gay life in New York in the 80s. Everyone's turning into fairies, as I recall. I can't, they're singers who turn into fairies. And then there's some scenes where they all go, well, all these gay men are in the gym working out until they look absolutely just muscular to, to ridiculous points. And Tom's uh, vision of New, this sort of New York gay scene is, is uh, just like everything of his, black. Um, so this is the Wings of Song. Okay, all the titles, Getting Into Death. <laughs> you, know, he can't, you know, he didn't waste the time. There's an English, an English version. That was the English version. There's the American version. The short story collections. A Child's Garden of Grammar. You know, he wrote verse and verse about grammar. I used to use some of these in my, my comp, comp courses. Um, here's another interesting one. Um, Black Alice. This is by Tom Dish and John Sladek. And I want to say that somewhere along the line it was published under a pseudonym. So John Sladek, there he is in the, in, the, in the great Camden Market outside of the Clutes House where almost everybody lived in that period of, or, or for, through, through the 80s and 90s, I think everybody's lived there. And there's the Camden Market, there's Tom Dish, and two of the really great comic novelists and, and short story writers. The Man Who Had No Idea. Uh, that, these are, this is a short story collection. Um, lots of, some small chat books. The Castle of Indolence, which is about creative writing programs. The Castle of Indolence. And it's a really good one essay, funny piece about the ridiculousness of of, of uh, creative writing programs. One of Tom's last books, The Word of God. I didn't finish it, actually. I, it was some funny bits in it. I, he'd already, it was already dead. He already killed himself by the time that this came out, and I read parts of it, and some of it's very funny. But it's basically his last blast at the stupidity of, of America and the world. Um, the Wall of America, his last short story collection that I know of, as good as his first ones. Um, one of his books of poetry, again, the titles, Here I Am, There You Are, Where Were We? <laughs> it's like, and the po every poem is as good as the title. Burn This and Other Essays and Criticism. Um, some of Tom's best known novels was probably 334, and then the one he's best known for in the, 60, in, the, in the 60s and 70s, one of the first books I read of his was called Camp Concentration. Again, the titles are always interesting. And, of course, the reversal on concentration camp. And the premise is it's about a poet who's in prison, who's given a drug to make himself smarter. So he starts off smart and becomes a genius. And the amazing part of it is that Tom Dish makes you feel you're becoming a genius with this guy. And I can't remember else. It's a pretty dark book. Uh, there's 
two or three other, this is going on too long probably. Um, two of Tom's late books were, I read these after he died, Proteus, The Voyage of the Proteus, and Proteus Sails Again, which are about him living in New York. They're kind of fantasy sh short novels after his partner died, as I recall, and they're really good. These these are two of his best best short pieces, and they're really, if you've missed them or you're a Tom Dish fan, or you can see these anywhere, the Proteus books, you have to read them in sequence, there's two of them, are wonderful, wonderful books, and they reflect quite uh, dryly and comically and uh, sadly on death, which Tom is obsessed with, or obsessed with, like all of us, as he gets closer to it. Um, his last years, or his last months, he kept, again, he did so many things. He, he did one of the first computer interactive novels. He did, uh, we, we've talked about all these different genres he did, and he excelled in. And um, near the end of his life, he started keeping a blog where he wrote all his poems and his reflections on death and his reflection on dying. I'm going to put a link to that. It's called Enzo, and it's beautiful. I mean, he wrote. He literally wrote a blog that is a work of art, and I, I, I'm sure there are others out there, but this is one of the few works of art that I have seen as a blog. This week, um, in order to kind of get wet, wet my whistle to talk about Tom, I went back and read his first novel, The Genocides. Okay, The Genocides. It is uh, like many Tom Dish books. It's a good example. He was very young. It's a very simple, quick commercial book, but it has all the brilliance of Dish, and it's sort of a spin on. H.G. Wells's War of the Worlds, where the, the aliens have come and turned our planet into some giant, uh, some giant uh, agricultural project, so they can feed themselves, and and they've eliminated all the human beings on the Earth, and the ones that, the human beings who have survived are surviving very precariously, and they're basically like insects living in this in this forest that's being grown by these aliens, and it is a good example of what's good and, and bad about it is that the first two-thirds of the book are brilliant. And all the central characters, all the human beings, are horrible people. They're religious. They're all talking about how God's going to help them. They're all, uh, um, they, they're basically cannibals. They're eating one another. And, and, and they're, they're, there's, there's very, they're all dying off. And they're afraid that someone might be nude in front of another person. And that provincial stupidity of religious people. Tom Dish has no, no patience with religion, by the way. Um, and, and, uh, they they basically get slaughtered horribly. Everyone dies horribly. This book gets worse and worse. It's funny. It's hilarious. It gets worse and worse for everybody until everybody dies. And and near the last 20 pages, you might see when you read this book, Tom kind of ratchets up the horrors that happen to these people near the end. So again, the, the more nice a person you are, the more horribly you die in this book. It's a very funny book, very dark. And sort of reflects Tom's vision of humanity, which is not a—it's not a very—he doesn't find humanity very palatable, I would say. So beauty in every single thing Tom wrote. We're gonna—I'll talk about more books individually as we move along over the over the years. Uh, I mean, if I keep doing this thing, uh, I'll definitely be reading lots of Tom Dish. I would recommend if you go out to get anything of Tom Dish's, probably the first place to go for really his best. Page Turner, The Priest, um, any of these long Knopf books. Uh, the Sub is really good. Um, I would recommend any of Tom's short story collections or best of short stories. You, you can't go wrong. He was one of the best short story writers of his generation, woefully neglected by uh, the stupid anthologies and the stupid uh, awards committees. A great short story writer and very funny. So uh, you'll, you'll always be surprised. And his poetry, his last book of poetry, I think it's called The End of It, and it's somewhere up there. His last book of poetry was wonderful. Uh, his poetry changed a lot near the end of his life. I'm going to leave you a link to a piece I wrote about Tom. I'm going to put a photo up here of me and one of my favorite photos of me and Tom together. I used to love Tom Dish, bringing him out to Connecticut or visiting him in New York. And I'll probably put up uh, the link to the End Zone, which has got some lovely poetry in it and lovely thoughts and reflections near the end of Tom's life. All right, that's it. One of my favorite writers. I love Tom. Tom, we miss you. I miss you every day, okay? And I still got all your books. Now I got to figure out, I got to put them all back up on the shelves. All right, don't expect nice shirts every week. I can't do this. All right.